kick it? Can we kick it? Convocation! Welcome! All right, all right, now check this out. Cheer for your school, y'all. My name is Greg Carter from Liberty High School, and it's a pleasure to be asked to give you the welcome at this year's convocation this year. 
I would first like to thank the school board, the superintendent, them, for giving me the honor to do this. We'd like to give the Fauquier Pants Band a big round of applause for the great job they've done. And I'd like to give a special thank you to everyone who put their trust in me to get this job done today. <laughs> um, I'd, like to, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Cox, my principal, for trusting in me and everything. And like I said, thank the school board for giving me the honor to do this. I'd like to give a very good welcome to all our new Falkir County employees that's here. And all our returning employees that came back today. We uh, hope everyone had a great summer, great summer, and let's turn this school year into a great school year. Thank you. <laughs> Man, he want to steal my thunder. <laughs> At this time, we'd like to present to you the Liberty High School uh, Color Guard, and they will present the colors as we all stand to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May you be seated. I remember that song. Can you dig it? Uh, welcome everyone. Um, I want to say first of all thank you to the folks at Fauquier High School. Uh, I know it's a ton of work to host a convocation so we thank you. Thank you to the metal band. They were awesome. Really appreciate the work you did. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, I have a few people to, to recognize and introduce, and then I'm going to have a seat, but I want to start with, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Sheriff Bob Mosier, who's here representing the Sheriff's Department. He is a great guy and a great sheriff, and we are blessed to have him. Thank you very much, Sheriff. We have four of our five school board members here today. 
Uh, and I say this all the time, and I mean it with all sincerity. We are so fortunate in Fauquier County to have a 100% supportive school board, someone who cares about every one of you and every one of our kids, and it makes a huge difference. Uh, from the Center District and our chairman this year, Mr. Brian Gorg. Donna Grove, Suzanne Sloan, and Duke Bland. This is Suzanne's first convocation. Okay, they're all like this, so just be prepared. And uh, last but not least, uh, I want to recognize, I went to the new teacher dinner last night, and it was a little bit of a combination of a frat party and a, a pro wrestling match. Uh, but they are a, a rowdy bunch and an enthusiastic bunch. So welcome new teachers. We're really, really glad you're here. And the rest of you not so new people, thanks for coming back. We really appreciate that. Makes a difference. So, thank you. And find I'm king of the hill, top of the heap. All right. <laughs> Chairman of the board, old blue eyes, I love it. My name is Brian Gorg, and I'm honored to be with you today. I would like to be the first to offer you the three words of encouragement that will get you through the next 10 months. It's Friday afternoon. I'm sure if you're like me, you spent your summer wandering this amazing community we call Fauquier County, seeing the beautiful towns, the rolling hillsides, while hunting for Pokemon characters, right? right? We all know this is a beautiful place to live, but really what makes Fauquier County special are its people. I believe in the people of this community, and the people of this community believe in our public education system. This is especially evident in the way that our community has put resources towards public education. So it's, my, it's my privilege uh, today to introduce you to two groups that have joined us today and that have exemplified this commitment from our community. The first is the Fauquier Excellence in Education Foundation. Since the mid-1980s, the Committee for Excellence in Education has supported and promoted excellence in our public schools by providing enrichment programs and opportunities for teachers. The committee was award has awarded funds in excess of $260,000 uh, to over 175 teachers during that time. During the 2013-14 school year, a group of Fauquier County school officials, school board members, parents, and local citizens met regularly in the interest of launching a local public school foundation to benefit students and make 21st century learning a reality. At this time, if there's anybody from, our, from that board who is here, could you please stand up to be recognized? I think we have some people in the back. Oh, there we go, that's over here. I'd like to thank the Fauquier Excellence in Education Foundation for these generous efforts on our behalf, including a long-standing support of teacher interest and in intellectual pursuits via their teacher grant programs, an almost 33-year sponsorship of the community welcome dinner for our new teachers this year, which was really a party last night if you were there, uh, held at the Stone Ridge Events Center, monetary support for two STEM pro, uh, camps, Camp Invention and Outdoor Explore, and generous support of our 2016 Teacher of the Year nominees, which they will meet in the program today. So thank you very much uh, for all your support, uh, Fauquier Excellence in Education Foundation. Let's give them another round of applause. <clears throat> the second group is, uh, I'm, I'm so thrilled to, to talk about this group today, is the PATH Foundation. Just a quick background, on October 31st, 2013, Fauquier Health and LifePoint Hospitals formed a joint venture to share ownership and operation of Fauquier Health, funding a charitable foundation to support crucial community needs. The PATH Foundation was the outcome of that. 
The PATH Foundation is committed to honoring the legacy of community philanthropy by being good stewards of the Foundation's assets and by using these two assets to stimulate community benefit, inspire citizen engagement, and support area resources. The Foundation's goal is to enhance the region as a place where everyone has the opportunity to have a healthy place to live, work, play, and grow. Today we have five uh, people associated with the PATH Foundation. I'm going to ask if you all can stand. They're sitting over here. John McCarthy, board chair. Kirsten Hammer Duick, Senior Program Officer. Amy Petty, Director of Communications. Mayor Powell Duggan, who is the Legal Counsel for the Foundation. And our very own Janelle Downs, who's a board member of the Foundation. Thank you for the PATH Foundation for these efforts on our behalf. Funding the appearance of a national speaker, author, and child advocate Wes Kennedy to provide to students at all high schools. Providing a host of resources for administrators and teachers. Support of several grants to support wellness, learning, quality teaching, and I need a drum roll on this one, please. Yes. Ready? A $700,000 grant to begin a comprehensive wellness program for Fauquier County Public Schools this year. <laughs> Through this grant, every school in this county will benefit from the wellness coordinator and the wellness integration program specialists, whom we have been able to hire because of this grant. We are excited about what this grant and these educators will do to enhance learning for all the students of this county. On behalf of the school board uh, in this community, to both foundations, thank you very much for what you do for this community. And on behalf of the rest of the school board members, uh, we are so thrilled to be with you today. We are honored every day we get to work with you and help uh, lead this, this division in directions that we can only imagine. So thank you very much for all the hospitality you always grant to us. So at this time, I would like to bring up the very wonderful and beautiful Dr. Sandra Mitchell. It is time once again to honor Fauquier's Teachers of the Year who symbolize the best among us. For those of you new to Fauquier, we believe in celebrating excellence within our employee ranks. Through our TREE Awards, presented in the spring of each year, we honor our bus drivers, our nurses, custodians, food service workers, office staff, and instructional assistants. We also honor our teachers in the spring and at this time every year. As a member of the Washington Post community, as many of you know, the Post asks school divisions in our region to select a teacher to represent us each year, and that process forms the foundation of what we do here today. We want to thank the Fauquier Education and Excellence Foundation once again for providing a monetary award to these teachers, counselors, and librarians. So it is now a pleasure to introduce each school winner to you. Um, this past year, we have had a record number of nominees, virtually from every school in the school division. So I will have to just say a brief statement about each, but my brevity this year does not diminish the high regard we all have for each of you. They're all sitting right here. I'm asking each of them to stand when I call your name, so we're going to begin. Uh, Kathy Cheney. <laughs> Kathy is Liberty High School's Teacher of the Year winner, and Kathy is a special education teacher and is described by a host of her students as hardworking, the best, wonderful, and loving. And she goes beyond what she had to do for me, is what one student said. Please congratulate Kathy Chang. <laughs> Taylor Middle School's winner is science teacher Pat Colo.
and one student said about Pat, it is like you fill in an empty space in my mind, Ms. Colo, when you do examples in class like this for fun, you make me happy and excited while at the same time you actually make me smarter. Please honor Pat Colo. <laughs> Math teacher Emily Finner is PB Smith's winner. A A fellow teacher writes, Emily Finner is the quintessential teacher. She is great at what she does and refuses to accept anything less than excellence from herself and her students. She loves her students and they love her back. Congratulations, Emily Finner. <laughs> Claude Thompson's winner is PE teacher Angie Harlow. Angie's colleagues collectively said that her perseverance and positive attitude is absolutely everything she does and is, is simply contagious. She's not only a boost to the children, but also to each one of us every single day. Congratulations, Angie. Marshall Middle School's winner is librarian teacher Linnell Hilling. One student wrote, to describe Ms. Hilling in one word would be tech savvy. Yes, I know that is really two words, but I think it's impossible to sum up such an awesome teacher with just one word. Congratulations, Linnell Hilling. <laughs> Described as a problem solver and innovator, kindergarten teacher Leanne Hurtak is Grace Miller's winner. One parent wrote, my son has never seen Ms. Hurtak have a bad day. Every day, is like, every day is like being in Disney World with Ms. Hurtak. <laughs> I could not have dreamed of a better teacher to start our son's educational journey. Thank you, Leanne Hurtak. <laughs> Richie Elementary's winner is third grade teacher, Lisa Jones. A former student who is now in high school writes the following, every now and then, if you are lucky, you get a teacher that leaves a lasting multi-year impression. Not only did she make us feel welcome, she made us feel invited. Invited to ask questions and even invited to walk around the blacktop with her at recess. Way to go, Lisa Jones. Falkier High School's winner is business and marketing teacher Kathleen Lynch. A colleague writes the following, Miss Lynch is a phenomenal teacher and those students who find themselves in her class are forever grateful and very often return after graduation to just tell her that. Congratulations, Kathy. The creator of the highly successful Parents as Partners program, ESL teacher Andrea Martins, is H.M. Pearson's Teacher of the Year winner. A colleague poetically said of her the following, she inspires, she inquires, she teaches, she reaches, she leads, and she succeeds. Congratulations, Andrea Martins. M.M. Pierce's winner is its phenomenal counselor, Debbie Melton. A colleague wrote, the love and devotion that Mrs. Melton has shown the students and staff at Pierce throughout her career is unrivaled. I am honored to have had the chance to be able to have worked with her and watch her work. Congratulations, Debbie. Described as a master teacher, music teacher Lisa Mergen is Auburn Middle School's winner. One parent whose child told her on a very snowy day that he had to go to school for band class 
said, her gift is that Lisa inspires students to do things they might not ever have thought they would be able to do on their very own. That's teaching. Congratulations, Lisa. Kirkland. Cattle Run's winner is journalism and English teacher Shelley Norton. <laughs> Shelley has impacted students for a lifetime. One student who thought she was taking just another elective said, she is now a junior at George Mason University, studying to be a journalist, and is the assistant news editor for the university's student-run newspaper. And she says, I owe all of it to Mrs. Norton. Congratulations, Shelly Norton. A colleague said of Marissa Pappas, Warrington Middle School's winner, that Marissa's award reward is watching her students and her peers be all they can be. She creates an artist in every student, providing them with the confidence that they can do anything. Marissa, we have to say, is also the Virginia Art Education Association's 2015 Art Educator of the Year. Please congratulate Marissa Tappas. <laughs> Cedar Lee's Teacher of the Year winner is a special educator, Margaret Schwent. Margaret's colleagues collectively said she is dedicated, positive, and relentlessly upbeat. Her students want to learn from her because they know she loves them, and her kindness knows no bounds. Please congratulate a special teacher, Margaret Schwent. Described as a model of excellence, phenomenal educator, third grade teacher Cindy Simpson is Mary Walters, Teacher of the Year. A colleague writes the following, Mrs. Simpson sees potential strengths and virtues over the behaviors of a child who can easily be frustrated. She looks past the actions and sees the wonderful result that actually may be years down the road. Congratulations, Cindy Simpson. <laughs> Described as one who always goes above and beyond, librarian Judy Spurka is Coleman Elementary's winner. Several colleagues said her contributions to the school cannot be measured. She is, they said, cherished by all who know her and our school and Fauquier County at large have been enriched by her presence. Please congratulate Judy Spurka. <laughs> Special educator Crystal Van Buren, Buren is Remfield Elementary's winner. A parent wrote that before she met her child's teacher, her fondest hope was that her child would have a teacher who could see her child as an individual, teach him well, and be patient on even the most trying of days. She said, Ms. Van Buren exceeded every one of my expectations. Congratulations, Crystal Van Buren. <laughs> Described as the go-to teacher, Kristen Verkamen is Greenville's Teacher of the Year winner. A parent told us that Ms. Verkamen's attentiveness, compassion, and efficiency have shown us just how much she cares about our child, his education, and most of all, his well-being. She is a master teacher. Congratulations, Kristen. And finally, Bradley Elementary's Teacher of the Year is Amy Havich. <laughs> Amy is a teacher in Bradley's multiple disabilities classroom. The numerous parent letters about Amy were so moving. 
and one wrote the following. When my child was placed on homebound after a serious surgery, Amy came to our house three times a week to teach her. One day she pulled out buttons with colors on them and asked our daughter to pick out each color. My entire family was there and we watched as our daughter got every color correct, something we had never seen her do. And it was in that moment that we realized our daughter was not only capable of learning, she was learning. That was the best gift anyone has ever given our family, and it's all due to this teacher. It is my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce Fauquier County's Teacher of the Year representative, a master teacher, and a person dedicated to healing the world, Ms. Amy Habich. Thank you. As the program order indicates, my job is to introduce the superintendent. I've been told that making a speech is not necessary today, but that I could say a few remarks if I wanted to. Oh, wait, 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 these, these are my remarks. These are, this is my purchase order request for materials and equipment that we need for our classroom. This goes, I, I was thinking that maybe since I was teacher of the year, I might be able to get some cool stuff for our kiddos. This goes to Frank Finn and Randy Corpening, so I'll just set that aside. <laughs> For those of us here who are teachers, there was a time in our life when we had to make the decision to go into teaching. Most of us had a reason for making that choice. I made the decision to teach because I wanted to wake up every day excited about how I was going to spend my day at work. One of my younger sisters struggled in school and had a learning disability. I remember what it felt like helping her with her homework one night and seeing that light bulb go on inside her head. I wanted to be responsible for making more light bulbs go on in her head, and I also wanted to help other kids who struggled learning. So I went into special education. Sometimes when I look at my paycheck, I wonder if being an electrician wouldn't have been a better way to help light bulbs go on. <laughs> But clearly, we all know that no teacher goes into this profession to get rich. We do it to make a difference. Special education, and particularly teaching students with multiple disabilities, is not something that just anyone can do. I cringe when I hear people tell those in college to get their degree in special education because there are always jobs in special education. My college advisor told me that special education teachers have a high burnout rate and that the average time before they burned out was three years. She said that that was why there were always jobs available. <laughs> I'm beginning my 15th year teaching special education and my passion... <laughs> my passion for the students that I teach is the same as it was when I began my first year. It's often easy to forget the reason we chose to go into teaching when we're in the middle of the school year and we are having one of those days that teachers have. We have teachers in this room who are brand new straight out of college and then there are those with more than 30 years in with retirement in their sights. Regardless of which end of the spectrum you are closest to, I'd like to encourage you to remember what it was about this profession that made you want to be a teacher. Hold on to that thought, write it down, and let it drive your passion as you begin this new school year. For those of you who are new to Fauquier County Public Schools, I want you to know that you chose a great place to work. 
My favorite aspect of working for this county is the team of people I work with. The honor of being named Teacher of the Year would never have been possible if I didn't have the chance to work with such an amazing and talented group of people. During my first year here, I learned so much from my instructional assistants, the occupational therapist, the physical therapist, speech pathologist, assistive technology specialist, vision teacher, administrators, and other teachers at Bradley Elementary. I have also gained some of the most amazing friends working here. We live in a world where negative is taken note of more often than positive. The media is always full of stories about what is wrong with this world and the people in it, rather than highlighting the amazing stories that are out there about people who make a difference. This year, when you are faced with a day when all you can see is what's going wrong, look around the room for what's going right and change your perspective. One of my favorite quotes is from Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yes, I am old enough to know who that was. <laughs> I heard it several times this summer as we heard tragic story after tragic story being told about in the news. Thankfully, the Christian radio station I listened to was able to help change some of that negative perspective by reading Fred Rogers' words. He said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. My grandfather was a teacher for 30 years. I called him on February 1st when I learned that I was Bradley's nominee for Teacher of the Year. He and my Nana told me how proud they were of me and that they loved me very much. I told him how shocked I was and honored just to even be nominated. I told him the winner would be announced in April, but there were 19 of us nominated and all the nominees were amazing. You are. Ten days later, my grandfather passed away suddenly at home. He didn't get to hear on this side of heaven that I was the recipient of this award. But I hope that his ear is pressed against heaven's gates right now as I dedicate the honor of being named Fauquier County's Teacher of the Year to him. Before I began my first year teaching, he shared a short story with me that I would like to read to you in closing. It's called The Greatest of Them All and the Author is Unknown. A wise king of an ancient land announced that he would set aside a day to do honor to the greatest of his subjects. On the designated day, people from all walks of life streamed into the city and gathered outside the palace. Amid the cheers of his subjects, the king made his way to the center of the assembly where a throne had been erected for him. Settling himself, the king instructed the various groups of citizens to present their candidates. First to come before the king was a man of great wealth, owner of vast lands and great industries. He gives much of his wealth to the poor, said the people. Next was a man of the law, well known for his great knowledge of legal matters. He is a great judge, his supporters said, famous for his wise decisions and deep sense of justice. A doctor, much sought after for his powers of healing the sick, was next. Following him was a great statesman who had brought great honor to himself and his country. One after another was paraded before the king and lauded for his accomplishments. Finally, a stooped, shabbily dressed old woman was led to the front. From her dim eyes shone the light of knowledge, understanding, and love. Who is this? demanded the king. What has she done to achieve greatness? You have seen and heard all of the others, was their reply. This, O oh king, is their teacher. Amid the applause of the throng, the king descended from his throne to proclaim her greatest of them all. At this time, I would like to introduce one of our greatest features in the county. He's accessible, courageous, and I was told to say he is a genius. <laughs> The truth is, he says often that he does not take himself seriously, as we will see later this afternoon, but he takes the work of educating children very seriously. 
It is my pleasure to introduce the winner of the 2016 Virginia Association of Elementary School Principals Pathfinder Award, David C. Jack. That is a tough act to follow. Andy Havich. I'm not even going to look at Dr. Mitchell, so I'm sure she has mascara running all down her face. <laughs> um, I, 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 don't, I did something I don't normally do, and I, I wrote notes for this. So this is it. After this, and then a, a short public service announcement, uh, we're going to call it. I don't know if you got the memo, but it's warm today. It's a little warm today. And whoever's idea it was to have some of this convocation outside is uh, in a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, this picture, I, I wanted to mention this picture briefly. I took this picture on during our vacation this summer. and. Um, our, our, the, our window to our room was on the face of the beach. And so this woke me up, you know, this, the sun coming into the window woke me up. So I went outside and I watched the sunrise and it was so beautiful. It was, it was uh, I mean, it was terribly beautiful. And I don't want to be cliche about it, although it is kind of cliche, but I sat there and a lot of people came out because it was such a beautiful sunrise. And I thought to myself, you know, every day, every day can be like this. You know, and again, it's, I know it sounds corny, a little cliche, and people will tease me later, but it, every day could be like this, you know? Uh, this, just in that moment, enjoying the sunrise, enjoying and creation, it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful day. Um, during last year's convocation, we had a gentleman speak to us by the name of Brett Leake, and I've known Brett, yeah, give him a hand. And I've known Brett. I've known Brett for years. Uh, actually, he was. He lives in Louisa County, where I was a, a teacher and a principal. And I've known him since, since way back then. And um, the the message relative to the power of yes. That's what he talked about. For those new people, he talked about the power of yes. And this is a man whose body is just absolutely corrupted by, by disease and. Um, but his spirit is just amazing. He's a, he considers himself the world's best sit-down, stand-up comedian. That's how he builds himself. Um, but he talked about the power of yes. And I have a pet peeve of mine, which I'll share with you just, for, just briefly, is it drives me crazy when people, when given a task or an opportunity or an idea, come up with 10 reasons why something won't work, as opposed to finding one reason why it can work. And that just drives me crazy. So my interpretation of what he said last year and the thing I took away from him last year was we have to find ways to make things work rather than always looking for reasons why they, they can't work. And I will confess that last year was a difficult year. It was. Um, I, I'm just like you. I have my bad days. And that's one of the reasons why I really work on not trying to take myself too seriously. And I, try, I take my work seriously. I try not to take myself too seriously. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you for reminding me that I'm a genius too, because sometimes I forget. <laughs> um, but uh, I get, we, we have bad days. And, and I had some bad weeks last year. I'm just going to confess them to you. And, but when I would have those bad days, I would think to myself, I can't be a hypocrite. Because three years ago, remember we talked about attitude, and it's all about attitude. Uh, and I can't be a hypocrite. And that's what the power of yes means for me. It's find, you know, find ways to make things work and quit feeling sorry for yourself. Because there's plenty of opportunity to do that. And as Amy pointed out, we just hear so much of that stuff, just constantly. And I, and I, hadn't, I didn't write this down. Here's where I get off script. I'm going to start. I'm moving off script gradually, Dr. Mitchell. Uh, you know, one of the things I talked about in uh, at Administrative Academy this summer was 
I learned the thing that dis discouraged me a bit last year was I started reading and hearing things from people who unfortunately they want to see us fail <laughs> I mean as crazy as it sounds they delight in our hardships you know and that's and I, I, I just can't that does not compute with me at all I just don't have that chip in me and I think we're talking about you know 98% of the population is right there with us and they support us and they're they're aware they're with us but I'm just astounded by the folks who um, they, they are okay with they're happy to see us fail and, and we just can't give in to those people we just can't we can't do it um, you know they choose to be miserable let them be you know and that's I used a more colorful term at administrative academy but it was a much smaller setting so I can't I can't repeat it here but um, we just have to overcome that and we got to find ways to make things work rather than finding reasons why they can work Now, as I mentioned three years ago I stood in front of you at Kettle Run High School and I talked about attitude and uh, Chuck Swindoll's quote was sort of the featured quote about you know life is 10% what happens to you and 90% of how you respond to it that's what we talked about and and folks I remind myself of that quote I would say if I if it's not daily it's pretty close not that it matters what I think or what I do but it helps uh, because we are all going to have our bad days uh, but what it comes down to is our attitude and how do we, we respond in the light of adversity and difficulty um, that's really what it comes down to and, um, and and having a good sense of humor boy I didn't know I don't know I, I'm gonna confess I, I don't know Amy very well but she had to be a poker player because well I saw her this morning she looked scared to death I'm like ah, you're gonna be fine uh, she came up here and just hit a home run and um, she was great oh my gosh uh, but it's you know it's that attitude I mean she got up here and asked for money who does that who, do, who does that so I don't I don't want to belabor this point other than to say you know it's when it's within all of our powers it's with, within all of us um, to enjoy the sunrise you know we, we have that ability we make we choose that we make that choice when we roll out of bed in the morning we can choose to be miserable and we can choose to be unhappy or we can choose to watch the sunrise and and that's 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 a daily challenge for me and I, and I hope it's something that you'll you know you'll take with you because let's face it you know it's like I always say to new teachers although I didn't say it uh, the other day when I spoke to them but I'll say it to you now uh, you know everyone teachers new teachers come in and it's such a great time they're, everybody's happy and they're overpaid and oh my what are these things called benefits you know and then they get that first paycheck and it's like you know they're calling HR right Janelle and who is this FICA person and uh, what are we paying him for uh, and it's around November I think new teachers where you realize that this is a tough job it is really really hard and it, and it, it, does, it never gets easier and I think that's the special thing about educators is in, in light of that and in spite of that they stick they stick with it you know they keep their nose to the grindstone and they do they do all they can to help kids and make sure that kids are successful and we all have the power to do that so uh, I only have a couple more slides but this is my favorite and I want to say this to you and I got it just I'm almost feel like I'm getting chumps shouldn't look at Dr. Mitchell I'm almost feel like I get choked up when I think about this but I mean it I mean it with everything that's within me is I believe in every one of you I believe in you and what I ask that is that you believe in yourselves you have that personal efficacy where you believe in yourself and you believe in the person sitting next to you okay that's extremely important and then most importantly is you believe in your kids it's general efficacy and personal efficacy it's I believe in my ability to teach and reach kids and I believe that my kids can do it you got, you got the if you got those two things you're home free and um, we call that we call that efficacy but I do I believe in every one of you and I want to remind you that 
you know, our, our differences, individual differences are normal, okay? And they make us stronger, not weaker. They make us better people, not worse people. None of us, no one's in here with some subversive, you know, plot to ruin the school system or, you know, ruin theirs. No one thinks that way. Everyone's here for the same thing, same reason, to help kids. We're all given an oar to pull, right? And we may pull it differently, but we're all pulling or moving in the same direction. But our individual differences make us better. Our diversity makes us better, not, not, not weaker. And that's, that's critically important. There's going to be about 11,000 kids coming, coming our way in a few days. And from all walks, and as we mentioned to new teachers, you know, we, we, we still have kids that don't have running, we, we, we do, without running water, with, with, uh, without electricity, we have those kids. And we got to raise, keep the bar raised for all of the kids. And that's my third point on this slide is, you remember, the, a rising tide lifts all vessels, okay? We raise the bar for all, all kids will rise. You know, I believe that. You, I know you believe that. So we need to believe in that collectively because it's extremely important. Last but not least. Um, no, that, that was, not, that was your one slide ahead of me. Back up, Hattie Kershaw. There you go, perfect. <laughs> um, well, actually, I already covered all this stuff. <laughs> I did, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. Um, Thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I do this to myself, right? I do it to myself. Okay. Um, one of the things every year that comes up is people um, ask us all the time about how we make calls relative to snow days. And uh, yeah, it comes up every year, and um, it's really it's a complicated and very scientific process. <laughs> and what we thought we would do is create a little PSA about uh, how the process works. And um, I want to thank my good friend Lewis McDonald uh, for being the genius behind this. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to. Get out of the way, are we ready to start the video? Very good. There's a big storm coming, and you know what that means. Tomorrow might be a snow day. Does everyone have their pajamas on backwards? And does everyone have their wooden spoons? And where are the six cubes of ice? Wait a minute, that's only five. Where's the sixth one? There it is. Cause I, I got, got a feeling feel tomorrow's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be snow, 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 snow. snow. It won't be long before we'll all be there with snow, snow, snow. Hi, <sighs> Jazz. Good morning, Dr. Jack. Have you seen the weather reports yet? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been up for a couple hours checking roads. What's going on? Well, Noah is saying that the storm is going to be tracking right over us, but the brunt of it's not going to hit till this afternoon. <sighs> well, I've gotten some early reports from the snow team and they weren't seeing anything, but let me get an update from Cheryl and find out what other school divisions are doing. All right, let me grab some coffee and uh, a shower and uh, you can give me a call back, okay?
Now, Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe announced... Fairfax, Prince William County Schools closed. Falk here. Oh, on come on, on. Falk here. Oh, shoot. All right, so you guys just get making snow, and if you two can put the screen up, I'll iron up the video set, and I'll get it on as soon as you put the screen up. All right, there's the screen. All right, all right, let's make sure this works. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Janice. Hey, Cheryl. What do you hear from the snow team? Well, nothing's changed much since the last time we talked to him, but I'm going to go ahead and radio Darlene, and we're going to get a check from him. Um, hang on. Darlene, I'm going to need you to get an update from the snow team, please. Copy. Stand by. Transportation to car A2. Can you give me an update? I'm currently at Auburn Middle School. The roads are clear, and the current habitat temperature is 32 degrees, and there's nothing falling. Transportation to car A3. Can you give me an update, please? A3, I am on the Savannah Road, and there's nothing falling. If the roads are wet, and the road temperature is 28 degrees. Hey, Janice. Um, I hope, don't know if you heard all that on the radio or not, but basically they're not seeing a whole lot. A little bit of wet in some of the areas, no snow. Okay, great. I heard it, and I'll let Dr. Jack know. And thanks to the snow team for getting out so early. You know a great snow day movie? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I recall Central Park in fall. You tore your dress. What a mess. I confess. Ah! Oh. oh, what a horrible nightmare. I better go check the weather. It's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow, snow day. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you out there in Fauquier County, it doesn't look too good. How much is likely? Too much. That's right, Dr. David Jack, too much snow is possible. The blizzard we think it's going to be, um, I can see the possibility that schools will be closed. Dang it! Siri, call Janice. Welcome back, Dr. Jack. Did you get a chance to see the forecast? Yeah, I see what you mean by the late afternoon storm. Have you heard anything from the snow team? They don't see any problems on the road. But Fairfax and Prince William have decided to close anyway. What do you think we should do? Hmm. Well, you know, you're the boss. It's really your decision. I'm here to give you help. What do you think we should do? Snow day, a feeling. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be. All right, I hear you. Let me check with a couple of my sources, okay? Today's the day. Still on time? Let's no. Oh, no, fresh, I'll fresh. Money that we won't go. My driveway's icy. Like, oh my God. The day looks snowy. Let's get it off. I know that we'll see snow fall. If it comes down and white, I'll just lose it all. I feel stressed out. I want to stay at home. Let's just stay out and shut down the whole week long. <laughs> Oh. What am I going to do? Let's make the call. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. Let's close it. Let's close it. Let's close it. Close it. Close it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Just do it and 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 do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. What do you think, Wilson? Now that that today's is a great idea. gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow snow day. Hey boss, it's getting late. Do we have a decision yet? Yes, I have. Based on my sources, we're gonna close today. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe the next day. Could be all week. You sure you want to close? Even the storm is showing a really late arrival. Trust me on this one. Let's just go ahead and get the word out. What about staff? Are we going to bring them in with this late arrival? 
Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Just do it and 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 do it. Let's do it, let's do it. Staff is off also. Okay, we'll get the word out. Talk with you later. Thanks, enjoy your day off. This is a great snow day movie. I recall Central Park in fall. How you toy a dress. What a mess, I confess. Carol, where's my coffee? That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's How about a couple gonna be I'm not a wife. snow day. That today's gonna be a snow snow day. A feeling. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow snow day. Today's the day. Let's pray for Hope you have a great school year. Enjoy the rest of the day off. Stay cool. My God, the day looks slow. Let's get it off. Let's get it off. I know that we'll see some fall. Calm down, white out, just lose it all. I feel stressed out. I wanna stay at home. Let's just stay out and shut down the whole week long. Feel up my car. Topped it off. Look at it snowing. Can't shovel off. Let's make the call. Just shut it down. Let's close the doors. And then we'll do it again. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Just do it and 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 do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got a feeling. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow snow day. A feeling. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow day. That today's gonna be a snow snow day. Today's the day. Let's pray for snow. I'll bet my money that we won't go. My driveway's icy. Like, oh my god. The day looks snowy. Let's get it off. Fill up my car. Topped it off. Look at it snowing. Can't shovel off. Let's make the call. Just shut it down. Let's close the doors. And then we'll do it again. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Just do it and do it.